Bearded Bristol here, and I'm just a guy who likes to talk and paint. I have started off on a new piece here, kind of a fun little sunset piece over Lake Okoboji in Iowa, and uh, done some of the sky work already, going to work on putting in some of the first layer of water, as it were. And uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to happen fast, so hang on tight, but, uh, you know, we're just going to kind of jump in as usual and see what comes of this. Starting off, I've mixed up some colors, uh, but I need to wet the paper first um, and get, uh, get some saturation here so that the colors will blend for me and bleed a little bit. So I've got my nylon brush, and I'm putting it on pretty thick here at the beginning. Oh yeah, that's definitely thick. Plenty of water to go around here. Which is good, right? Water for the water, you bet. Okay, then I'm going to take my paper towel here and just kind of dab some stuff, you know, kind of dab it out a little bit so I don't get any pooling uh, but there's still some saturation there on the paper and if there's not we'll add more water right it's kind of how we roll okay now we'll have some fun um, I have not entirely put together this evening my apologies for that um, it's been a hard, hard time this week just trying to find the time to do a video, but uh, now, now that we're getting started, I think uh, we'll just kind of see what happens next. And uh, wanted to chat a little bit about expectations. I had a very interesting discussion with a co-worker about expectations. And uh, it's funny because it was about another unrelated co-worker where this came up. And uh, this particular co-worker will refer to him as Frederick and his famous Frank Furbers, uh, doing this to protect the innocent. But uh, Frederick and his Frank Furters, try saying that three times fast, Frederick left the company a while back moved on to other things as one does, you know, throughout one's career, it's time to move on and try new things. Um, but with Frederick, Frederick had his famous Frankfurters. That's right, Frederick's famous Frankfurters. Uh, hot dog, right? Uh, anyway, Frederick and his famous Frankfurters were highly regarded by a great many people. And uh, when Frederick left, along with him went, you guessed it, the famous Frankfurters. And, uh, you know, not much was made of it at the time because we were kind of mid-COVID and a lot of things had changed for a great many people. Work situations were vastly different. And so Frederick's famous Frankfurters were not an ongoing concern at the time. But uh, since things have started to lift and life is kind of returning to something that could be akin to normal, Frederick's former boss, who's still with the company, would like to see a return of Frederick's famous Frankfurters, even though Frederick has fled. And I'm going to see how long I can keep this nonsense up. But uh, the problem is, Frederick's replacement has never had a Frederick's famous fra Frankfurter, so he has no idea what that is. You know, obviously we know what a Frankfurter is, but he doesn't know what Frederick's tasted like, so he is unable to duplicate that. Uh, and unfortunately, you know, he's being put in the position where the expectation is that he is somehow able to deliver a Frederick's famous Frankfurter without ever having met Frederick or had a famous Frankfurter. 
And uh, the problem with that is the expectations being put on him uh, that are just frankly, frankly, unrealistic. And I think, you know, it's, it's not fair to the new uh, chef, as it were, uh, to have to try to duplicate something like that because there's no frame of reference for a famous Frankfurter. And, uh, you know, but it's, it's something that we've probably all been guilty of doing or have encountered in our own work environments, having those expectations placed on us that, uh, you know, we cannot live up to because we don't know the situation. We were not around previously. Uh, you know, when I started my position, I heard an awful lot about all of the great things the previous director did. And fortunately or unfortunately, he was still with the company and worked under me. So I even got to hear about those expectations from him. But the fact remains, I was not present to witness any of those things. And so the expectation was that I live up to a standard that probably never existed. Uh, do you remember the Billy Joel, uh, keeping the faith? That's right, the good old days weren't always good, and tomorrow ain't as bad as it seems. And, uh, you know, Billy Joel is, is one of my spirit animals. Uh, you know, he, he, his lyrics just speak to so many things in life, and this being another one, um, intended or unintended, because, you know, the good old days weren't always good. But we tend to romanticize them as though they were. You know, we want to look at those good old days and through those rose-colored glasses and a layer and a level of perfection that never actually existed. And unfortunately, you know, it's not fair to us ourselves, but it's also not fair to the people that are around us currently because they don't know those past experiences or those past expectations but yet we kind of uh you know we want to levy those on our current relationships our work relationships you know, oh it was so much better in the old days well the fact of the matter was it really wasn't we just do a good good job of forgetting some of those difficult times you know we we fortunately as human animals tend to remember the good and try to repress the bad. And, you know, that's not always a bonus, but at the same time, I think it's sure, you know, it's, it's a positive for most of us um, on a daily basis to be able to look back at those things with a positive uh, memory frame of mind. But it's also not fair to levy those expectations on our current relationships, be it work or otherwise, because those people don't have that frame of reference. And because they may be very good at who they are and what they do, but we aren't truly giving them the opportunity to display that because we are still hung up on what was, you know, those expectations of the past. And, you know, a, a fun kind of example for this is, uh, I just watched the movie Footloose. And Footloose holds a very, the, the old one, by the way, there is no new one in my mind, but the original Footloose holds a very special place in my heart because that was one of the first two movies that I went to in the theater with my siblings. Um, they were a good deal older than I was and chose to take me along to see Footloose. And I have such a historic and wonderful memory of that movie. And I can remember the days of running into, you know, people, friends and whatnot in college or whatever who had never seen it. And, oh my gosh, you have to watch it. You absolutely have to watch this movie. And uh, some, you know, some people like it, some people don't. But it, it's, it's hard for us when we have that attachment to something from the past 
to be able to objectify it and understand that one of the reasons we have that fondness and those memories is because it was attached emotionally to other things. Uh, you know, I watched Top Gun for the very first time at a birthday party, uh, fifth grade birthday party. And that was one of the best nights of my life. And the movie was great. But I realize now that, that some of my attachment to the movie was because of the birthday party, not because I understood all of the themes and the love story and the this and that. We were elementary boys watching gunships fight in the air. And uh, that's, you know, we, we had the absolute time of our lives. And, uh, you know, but that doesn't stop us from viewing that as one of our favorite movies and wanting to relate that experience to somebody else. Uh, but they are not going to have that shared experience. That's just not how that works anymore. You know, once once you have matured past a certain age, you view things differently, as I mentioned with the mature themes of the actual movie. So it's it's not fair for us to expect other people to derive the same enjoyment from something that we once had. Uh, you know, from a relationship standpoint, I probably ruined a couple of my college relationships because of that, uh, because of a comparative analysis. Uh, you know, I, I dated a handful of girls in college, and all of them were wonderful in their own way, but I found myself comparing. Well, this one, if she was just as much fun as the last one, I would have the perfect relationship. And so ultimately those relationships all found their way to failure. And I am the culprit more often than not for just that reason. My expectation of others to perform in a manner that I saw or that I remembered that they had no prior knowledge of. And uh, just how unfair that is to any individual, whether it's in a relationship or in the workplace or elsewhere, you know, we, we can't expect people to be somebody that they're not and to do things that they are not equipped to do. You know, and even when it comes to my Frederick's famous Frankfurters, uh, we have the recipe for the Frankfurters. But if you are a chef, if you've known a chef and someone who's very good at cooking, you know that even with the same recipe does not mean you can duplicate the result. Uh, but in this specific case, what we are left with is a culinary person, a kitchen person, who will never be able to live up to the expectation because at this point the expectation is a memory. There's nothing particular, particularly current or relatable in that circumstance for that person to reference or for those that test the famous Frankfurters to be able to say, oh yes, you know, this is like the one I had yesterday. Instead, it's this is like the one I had two years ago. So, you know, the, the romanticizing of the past and the expectations placed on him are unrealistic and unattainable. And unfortunately, it's going to probably taint his relationship with the management because he will not be able to achieve the desired result. And uh, it's, it's just, it's too bad because we've all been guilty of it. Like I say, I certainly have, especially in the relationship arena. Um, we've all been guilty of it, but it's, it's certainly not fair to him, who is very good at a great many other things. He's just not a Frankfurt or famous type of guy. And, uh, you know, so he, he will, you know, probably not be given the same opportunities to display his skills because this will now taint him in that one specific arena that, again, is unrealistic and unattainable. And, uh, you know, I just uh, lay in this all on you to kind of consider that in your own lives and how to temper those expectations of others, especially when there's no relatable knowledge. 
when there's there's nothing to go on, it's hard for somebody to live up to the standard of somebody else. And uh, just, you know, it, it's, it's probably, again, something we are all super guilty of at one point or another. But it, it ruins our enjoyment because our expectations of others are not realistic or attainable. And it, it makes things difficult for that person. How is that person supposed to react when you say, if you were only more like her, if you were more like him, never met the man. I can't help you there. I can only do what I can do, and it's up to you to be able to accept me for who I am. And, uh, you know, just kind of a, a valuable lesson as we transition from job to job, relationship to relationship, and so forth, that, uh, you know, uh, keeping realistic expectations and keeping expectations current is kind of uh, where we ought to be. And uh, uh, I know it's tough to sit back and understand exactly what's happening as I'm doing this, especially when it happens so quickly. Um, but we do have, you know, we've got the skyline and the reflection from the sun, and we have some waves that are starting to develop down here. A long ways to go with this piece, obviously. Um, and there will be a second layer of waves over this, and potentially even a third. Uh, but you've got to start somewhere, and this is kind of the base, and trying to get that initial color blending kind of where it needs to be. Um, I expect with this piece there's going to be a lot of going back with white and with black, and that's, that's uh, intentional on my part. Um, I still want this piece to be very realistic, but I also am trying to kind of expand what I can do creatively with the brush. You know, I, I have kind of a sense in my head of what that additional white and black will look like. Um, but, you know, my expectations of this will change as we move forward as well. So how about that? Uh, always got to bring it back. Bring it home. Bring it home. Um, you know, and, and I, I say I don't like to lecture. Clearly, there's part of me that does. But when it, when it all comes down to it, I just really want people, you, to think about your decisions on a daily basis, your reactions, how you treat others and how you treat yourself, and how others treat you for that matter. And understand that the way you did things yesterday does not have to be the way you do things today or moving forward. Uh, you know, so I try to provide some real world examples for the things that I'm saying and the ways that I say them. And uh, don't always have a famous hot dog story, though. I'll try to do better. And I'm actually sweating in here tonight. It has warmed up considerably to be more spring-like around here, and apparently that has seeped into my house. So, uh, <laughs> it will be what it is. But, <clears throat> I'm going to put down the brush. Expectations, man. It's great to expect things. It's great to expect things from others, but do not be surprised when you are sorely disappointed. Uh, trying to, we, we oftentimes hold others to much higher expectations than we hold ourselves, and uh, especially when it relates to things from the past. Sorry, pausing the timer. Um, we romanticize the past. We remember the good things about the past, and we remember some bad things too, clearly. But we like to romanticize the past and make it be a place that uh, we want to go back to. And sometimes those things are no longer realistic or never ever actually existed. We can inflate things in our minds and in our hearts to a place that never actually happened. And it makes memories fun that way. But it makes it hard on others if that is your expectation of them, is to live up to something that is so grandiose or so good or great that it maybe never even actually happened. 
So just uh, consider, consider your expectations of others and your expectations of the past uh, as you move forward. Okay, that's enough of that nonsense right now. So, can I have a little scotch? I do have a pipe here, and I'm going to paint just a bit more, and then I'm going to call it a night. I apologize, this was a little disjointed because I found myself really focused on the color blending here, but, you know, the point is still valid as it relates to expectations, and even what you expect of me. Don't expect a lot because you're probably going to be disappointed. If you made it this far, follow me on Instagram. We'll be back again next week for another Talking and Painting. We'll talk to you again soon.